The sun beat down on the rolling pastures surrounding Baker Farm, baking the grass and dirt under its sweltering rays. John Baker wiped the sweat from his brow as he finished repairing a section of fence. He surveyed his work with a satisfied nod, ready to call it a day. All that remained was to fetch Lucifer from the grazing cattle and head inside for a well-earned rest. John whistled, and Lucifer's large head popped up from among the herd. The massive cane Corso bounded over, tongue lolling happily. Good boy, John praised, scratching behind Lucifer's ears. The dog had been his loyal companion for eight years, a gentle guardian of the farm. But as John led Lucifer towards the house, he noticed an odd stiffness in the dog's gait. You all right, boy? John asked with a frown. Lucifer didn't meet his eyes, staring fixedly ahead with an intensity that unsettled John. He quickened his pace, eager to get Lucifer inside and check for injuries. In the yard, Lucifer suddenly lunged at a chicken, pecking in the dirt, snapping its neck in an instant. John gasped. Lucifer, no! He tried to wrest the dead bird from Lucifer's jaws, but the dog growled, a low rumble John had never heard before. He backed away slowly, hands raised. Easy now, drop it. Lucifer obeyed, but continued to eye John warily, muscles tensed as if ready to spring. John called his wife Sarah out, concern etched on his weathered face. Something's not right with Lucifer. Better keep the kids inside. That evening, John's worries only deepened. At dinner, Lucifer paced the kitchen restlessly, hackles raised. When Sarah reached to pet him, he snapped at her hand. She yelped and John shoved Lucifer away, heart pounding. Get to the cellar. Now, he ordered. As Sarah herded the children downstairs, John shut Lucifer in the yard and phoned the vet, dreading what the morning might bring. In Oakdale, Terry Wilson scrolled through local news updates while folding laundry. A new post caught her eye. Baker farm dog turns aggressive. She read with growing concern about Lucifer's strange behavior and attacks, including the chicken that afternoon. Terry shivered, hugging her arms. As a mother, the thought of any threat to her daughter, Tracy filled her with dread. She found Tracy coloring at the kitchen table. Sweetie, it's getting late. Time for bed. Tracy pouted but complied, and Terry tucked her in with a kiss on the forehead. But that night, Terry lay awake long after Tracy drifted to sleep unable to stop worrying about the dog on the loose and what dangers might lurk in the dark. The next morning, John's grim expression said it all as he met the vet in the yard. Lucifer paced his pen, hackles raised and eyes wild. After examination, the vet shook his head solemnly. I'm afraid it's rabies. There's nothing more we can do. John closed his eyes against the painful truth. Loyal Lucifer had become a threat, a shadow of the gentle dog he once knew. And in Oakdale, an innocent family was blissfully unaware. Their quiet summer was about to take a nightmarish turn. Terry awoke with a start, heart pounding from a nightmare she couldn't recall. She glanced at the clock, 3 a.m. With a sigh, she rolled over to go back to sleep but her mind raced, replaying the news article about Lucifer. After an hour of restless tossing, Terry gave up. She crept downstairs, hoping fresh air might calm her nerves. Peering through the window, she saw storm clouds gathering in the dark sky. A storm was coming. In the kitchen, Terry noticed their supplies were running low. With the bad weather approaching, a trip to the store seemed wise, but the idea of venturing out with Tracy filled her with unease. Still, they needed food and she couldn't leave her daughter home alone. 
At dawn, Terry gently woke Tracy. Sweetie, mommy has to go to the store. Wanna come? Tracy nodded sleepily. Terry dressed her in rain boots and a jacket, then bundled herself up as well. The drive into town was eerily quiet. Few cars on the road in the early hour. Tracy chattered away in the back seat, oblivious to Terry's tension. As they passed Baker Farm, Terry glimpsed John pacing his yard, face drawn with worry, even from a distance. At the store, Terry rushed through shopping while Tracy picked out treats. Hurry, Mommy. The rain is coming, Tracy said as fat drops began to fall. Terry paid and they dashed to the car, soaked through by the time they climbed in. As Terry started the engine, Tracy gasped. Mommy, look. She pointed to a dark shape, loping through the downpour along the road's edge. Terry's blood ran cold. It was Lucifer, fur matted, and eyes glowing an unnatural red. Terry slammed the car into drive, tires squealing as she floored it away. But Lucifer gave chase, picking up speed despite his sodden coat. Terry glanced in the rearview mirror, horror rising in her throat at Lucifer's relentless pursuit. Mommy, the doggy wants to play, Tracy said, oblivious to Terry's panic. No, sweetie, that dog is very sick. We need to get home fast. Terry pushed the pedal harder, but the rain made the road treacherous. One run roof could send them into a skid. Through the deluge, Terry glimpsed their turn up ahead. If she could make the corner before Lucifer caught up, she swung the wheel, tires hydroplaning on the wet asphalt. For a terrifying moment, the car fishtailed, then found purchase again, shooting up their street. Terry risked a look back. Lucifer was nowhere to be seen. Had they lost him? She exhaled in relief, but it was short-lived. A dark shape exploded from the bushes, jaws snapping as Lucifer launched himself onto the hood. Terry screamed and slammed on the brakes. Terry sat frozen in horror as Lucifer's massive paws scrabbled for purchase on the rain. Slicked hood, his jaws snapped mere inches from the windshield eyes blazing with madness. In the back seat, Tracy wailed in terror. Mommy. Terry snapped out of her daze and slammed the car into reverse. Lucifer lost his footing, but quickly regained it. Hackles raised as he snarled at the windows. Think, think, Terry told herself, fighting panic. She couldn't back up with Lucifer blocking the way, and accelerating forward risked him breaking through the glass. Trapped, all she could do was lay on the horn, hoping its piercing wail might startle Lucifer away. But the dog was beyond reason. He barely flinched at the horn's blare. Hackles raised as rainwater streamed from his matted fur. His claws left deep gouges in the hood with each swipe, inching closer to the windshield's crackling surface. Terry's mind raced through desperate plans. Try to run him over in reverse. Call for help and risk distracting Lucifer. She fumbled for her phone with a shaking hand, but it slipped from her grasp, lost under the seat. Through her own screams and Tracy's sobs, Terry heard a new sound. Lucifer's claws had found purchase. He began raking at the glass, shredding the wipers as cracks spiderwebbed outwards. Terry slammed the gear into drive and gunned it, tires spinning uselessly in the mud. With a roar of shattering glass, Lucifer's paw punched through. Terry threw the car into reverse, but it was too late. Lucifer shoved his head through the new opening, jaws snapping mere inches from her face. Terry grabbed the first object at hand, a half-empty water bottle, and smashed it against Lucifer's muzzle. He reared back with a yelp just long enough for her to floor the gas pedal. The car shot backwards, but Lucifer was too quick, leaping after them in a blur of matted fur. 
His weight crashed onto the trunk, rocking the car as he scrabbled for purchase. Through the rear windshield, Terry saw his crazed eyes lock onto Tracy, who had gone deathly still in shock with a guttural snarl. Lucifer began tearing at the glass, claws shrieking as they raked down the surface. Terry slammed on the brakes, throwing Lucifer off, balanced long enough to floor it forward, but he was right behind them, gaining ground with terrifying speed. She had to lose him, had to protect Tracy. But had to protect Tracy, but how? Trapped on this narrow country road with a demented beast snapping at their heels. Through the pouring rain, Terry glimpsed her turn approaching and swung hard, fishtailing as before. But this time Lucifer was ready, matching her turn with preternatural speed. His massive form crashed into the side of the car, rocking it onto two wheels. Terry screamed as the car tipped, certain it would roll with Lucifer's weight. But somehow it found purchase again, all four wheels slamming down with a jolt that sent a spray of mud and grass into the air. For a moment there was silence, but for the pounding rain. Then Lucifer's snarls resumed as he scrabbled back up the side of the car, claws raking metal. Terry threw the gear into park and leapt out the driver's side door, grabbing the first thing she saw, a fallen tree branch. She swung with all her might at Lucifer through the open window. The branch connected with a sickening crack, but he barely flinched, lunging to snap at her arm. Terry stumbled back, heart in her throat. Through the glass, she saw Tracy curled in a ball, sobbing hysterically. Think, think, Terry told herself, fighting back panic. She had to engage Lucifer keep his attention away from Tracy. Gripping the branch like a club, she inched towards the open window. Hey, she shouted at Lucifer. Over here, you mangy mutt. Lucifer's head whipped around, eyes locking onto Terry's with chilling focus. He pulled himself out of the window, slowly, as if savoring the moment. Terry backed away step by step, branch raised, praying someone would drive by to help but the road was empty under the storm's dark veil. Lucifer stalked after her, muscles coiled to spring. Terry stopped when her back hit a tree, trapped with a rabid beast closing in. She swung the branch, but Lucifer was too quick, dodging with a snarl. His massive paws slammed into her chest, knocking the wind from her lungs as she crashed to the muddy ground. Through the rain blurring her vision, Terry saw Lucifer's jaws descending for the kill. With a scream of effort, she shoved the branch between his teeth just in time. Lucifer gnashed furiously, splinters flying as the branch began to crack. Terry knew she was losing, could feel Lucifer's hot breath on her face through the downpour. As the branch finally snapped, Terry saw her only chance. She shoved her arm into Lucifer's maw, feeling his teeth slice her flesh. But the pain spurred her on, and she grabbed two fistfuls of his wet fur, yanking his head back with a primal yell. Lucifer howled, thrashing to break free, but Terry held on with every ounce of strength left in her body. Through the haze of pain, she saw headlights in the distance. Help! Terry screamed the top of her lungs. Somebody help us, please. The lights slowed, then stopped. It was John Baker who had come searching when he heard Lucifer had escaped. He leapt out with a tranquilizer gun, taking aim through the sheets of rain. The dart found its mark, and Lucifer's struggles grew weaker as darkness closed in. Terry finally let go, collapsing in the mud. The last thing she saw before passing out was John scooping up Tracy from the back seat. Terry awoke to the beeping of machines and sterile white walls. She tried to sit up with a groan, but a sharp pain shot through her bandaged arm, holding her down. Easy now, you're safe. 
John Baker sat by her bedside, face drawn with exhaustion. Terry's memories came flooding back. Lucifer's attack, fighting for her life in the storm. Tracy, she cried, where's my daughter? She's all right. Just shaken up, I've got her downstairs with Sarah. John took Terry's good hand, reassuringly. You saved her life out there. I don't know how to thank you. Terry relaxed slightly. Relief washing over her. But her ordeal wasn't over. Lucifer was still out there somewhere. What about the dog? Did you find him? John shook his head grimly. We tracked his trail to the woods, but lost it in the rain. I've got the whole town searching, but... He trailed off, fear in his eyes. Terry shuddered. Imagining Lucifer lurking the dark trees, waiting to strike again. She had to know the truth. John, what happened to him? Why did he change? John sighed heavily. I wish I knew. The vet said, it's rabies. But Lucifer never bit or fought any other animals. He just snapped one day, like a switch flipped in his brain. A nurse entered then to check Terry's vitals. You need rest, dear. Try not to worry. We'll find that dog, I promise. But her forced smile didn't convince Terry. That night, a fresh storm rolled in, thunder booming through the hospital walls. Terry lay awake, replaying Lucifer's crazed eyes and snapping jaws in her mind. What had turned Oakdale's gentle farm dog into a killer? And would he stop until he'd silenced them all for good? The next morning, Terry was cleared to go home with Tracy. But as they drove up, she saw people rushing around with flashlights. John had called an emergency town meeting. In the yard, a grim crowd had gathered despite the pouring rain. We found signs of Lucifer near Sycamore Creek, John announced. He's cornered, but crazed as ever. I say, we flush him out before he strikes again. An uproar arose, but Terry cut through it. No, you'll just provoke him. We need a better plan. The crowd fell silent, turning to her expectantly. Terry steeled her nerves, knowing she had to protect her town. Give me till dawn. I think I know how to end this, peacefully. John nodded reluctantly. You've got till morning. Then we do this my way. The crowd dispersed as Terry hurried inside, mind racing to devise a plan to outwit the beast unleashed upon them all. But would her idea work? Or was violence now their only hope for survival? The night stretched on as Terry worked desperately to save them from the nightmare hound. The storm continued its relentless assault through the night. Terry paced her living room, running through plans, while Tracy slept fitfully upstairs. By dawn, she had an idea. Risky, but it was the best chance to end this peacefully. She met John and the search party as they gathered in the rain, flashlights in hand. Wait, I have a plan, Terry said. John eyed her doubtfully, but nodded for her to continue. We use Lucifer's instincts against him, bait him with food into a cage, then sedate him. No violence needed. The men murmured uncertainly, but John held up a hand. Let's give it a try. What do you need? Terry laid out supplies. Meat, the cage from John's barn tranquilizers. With the men's help, she set the trap near Sycamore Creek at dawn. Now we wait, she said grimly. Hours passed, with no sign of Lucifer. The men grew restless. This is a waste of time, one grumbled. I say we flush him out shooting. Terry's heart sank. Her plan was failing, just a little longer, she pleaded. 
then a snap of a twig in the woods. Lucifer emerged like a wraith from the mist, fur matted and eyes blazing. He zeroed in on the bait, stalking towards the open cage. Easy boy, Terry soothed, keeping perfectly still. Lucifer lunged and found himself trapped inside metal bars. He roared in fury, flinging himself at the cage walls. Now, Terry yelled. John fired the tranquilizer through the bars. It found its mark and Lucifer collapsed, fight, leaving his body. The men cheered, but Terry only felt relief tinged with sadness. What happened to you, boy? She whispered, stroking Lucifer's damp fur. His breathing slowed as the drug took hold. Soon he was out cold. They loaded the cage onto a truck. Destination the lab for tests. With Lucifer sedated, the threat was over, but questions lingered. That evening, results came back. An aggressive brain tumor, inoperable. It explained Lucifer's bizarre change in nature. A few days later, Terry and Tracy stood with John at the farm to say goodbye. Lucifer had been euthanized, finally at peace. John placed a paw print, cast in stone as a memorial. You saved us all, Terry told him softly. Rest well, brave boy. As they drove away, Tracy chattered about happy memories of Lucifer from before. Terry smiled. Glad the nightmare was over and their quiet lives could resume. But she'd never forget the hound who turned from man's best friend into Oakdale's gravest threat. And the lengths a mother would go to protect her child against even the darkest of beasts.